So here is this Ramakrishna now reconciling, if you like, this idea of the bhakti with the gnana. Now Adi Shankara says, in order for you to be established in gnana mark, look, this is experiential religion with Adi Shankara too. You require four things. Vivek, discrimination between what is real and what is not real. Not fancy or fanciful thing, but things which are real, which will stand the test. Vivek, Vairagya, dispassion. Then Shatta Sampati. These are the kind of things which require Sam, Dham, Uparati, Titiksha, Samadhan and Shraddha. And the fourth one, the fourth one is Mumokshvatva. Mumokshvatva means you feel tremendous attraction towards the idea of God. Tremendous. Now all these instruments that you require, the tools that you require, are already visible in the story of Ramakrishna. He doesn't have to kind of go to a university and, and develop any of these traits. He already possesses all of, this, all of this. So the student is ready and it's time for the teacher to make an entrance. And the teacher is of equal caliber, very unique teacher. So one day in the, in the Dakshineshwar temple enters a very tall, a, a very, very kind of magnanimous, charismatic character. By the way, he's wearing no clothes, so he's off automatically, he draws attention. <laughs> he walks in. His name is Totapuri. He walks into the, into the temple and he's in his different world. You see, this person is established in Advait. My essential nature is God. He's established. Day and night, he's established in the state of mind. He walks into the temple garden. And you see, these people have no kind of qualms, they are not, they have no, no purpose, they just wonder about the world because they are established in this God knowledge, knowledge that I am that. And he walks in, he's like a king, majestic. And he walks in, he sees this Ramakrishna sitting on the veranda of the temple. He looks at his face, the face is shining. This boy is suitable to receive the knowledge of Advait. He thought, hmm, I've got the right pupil here. He said, come here, your face is shining. I wish to teach you Advait, the highest philosophy. Would you like to learn it? And Ramakrishna, in a very casual voice, he said, let me ask my mummy. <laughs> <laughs> and Totapu is such a grown-up, he's about 23, he's such a grown-up boy, and he still has to ask his mummy, okay, let him, let's please him. He said, okay, go and ask your mummy. He thought he'll go into the kitchen and ask his mummy. This Ramakrishna ran into the temple, Friends, think of this. We visit lots of temples and we see lots of deities. And we bow down and we look, in, in look, at the, look at these lovely deities with appreciation, with tremendous love. And yet we see a stone image, stone image. Imagine this Ramakrishna state of mind. I told you, after this tremendous hard work, Mother Goddess was real for him. When he walks into the temple, just imagine, just imagine. For a moment, let yourself go. Imagine that you're walking into a temple and the deity of your choice is there. And when you, as you walk in, the hair on your body begins to stand up because you are coming face to face with the deity that you love. You walk in and you become, get a thrill. And then, you see, you raise your eyes to look at the deity and instead of seeing a stone image, you see the smiling face living, shining, looking back at you. What will happen? This is spirituality, real, experiential religion, real, not make-believe. This is the state of this Ramakrishna. He sees the mother goddess at will. He ran into the temple and after a few minutes came smiling, came out saying, very good. He went to Totapur, he said, look, my mommy said she had invited you here to teach me. <laughs> Like, it, you know, you, you ask, getting a tuition, somebody to give you tuition to your children. You know, you invite a teacher saying, teach maths, the boy is struggling with maths, and the teacher walks in and says, mommy called him. He said, my mommy said, she has brought you here to teach me Advait. So I'm per perfectly happy to practice this. Totapuri said, no mommy's ever dictated to me, and I don't charge fees, and I, I'm not anybody's tutor. I don't know who is this mommy. Never mind, the boy's got a little bit kind of screw loose. Never mind, <laughs> I'll deal with him. Okay, said Totapuri, tomorrow you come, we start the process. 
You see, this is experiential religion of the highest form, Advait. You see, there is a, people think that they all are equal. In fact, there is a hierarchy. From the Dvait, you proceed, progress to the Vishishta Dvait. From the Vishishta Dvait, because even here there is a bit of arbitrariness. You enter the Advait. There is a hierarchy. Not that one is wrong. There are different stages of development toward the same target. So this Ramakrishna says, I am ready for Advait. My mommy said so. Ah, next day, come very early. You know how they start these people? Just after midnight, they begin the process. So it's not early, it doesn't mean 8 o'clock in the morning and 10 o'clock the Sindhi time. This is much earlier, <laughs> much earlier. More, the, the day starts much earlier. So they come, the boy is ready. They take a bath in the river Ganga. Now, says, first thing first. First, I have to give you Diksha. You have to become a sannyasi. And Ramakrishna said, well, I don't mind, but my mummy, not the mother goddess, but the other mummy, the real one in the kitchen, she will be very you know, worried if she sees that I've got uh, uh, taken sannyas and become a sannyasi. Don't worry, she doesn't have to know. So this boy is asked to take diksha. He takes a diksha. He's asked to do his shraddh ceremony. Shraddh means when you die, Somebody, your, your, your descendants will do a shrad ceremony. Now here, if you want to become a sannyasi, you do your own shrad because you can't wait to be, you know, have your children. So you carry out your own shrad ceremony. He does that too. Early in the morning, before the sun has come up, time has come to start the process of Advait. So they go into a little, little hut, which is just in that, in that particular type part of the temple, uh, north of the temple. They go into the hut, quiet, and they sit you know, the, the guru sits in front of the teacher, the student, and said, now sit cross-legged. Now, let me give you the, the, the ultimate knowledge regarding what is everything. Focus your mind, close your eyes and focus your mind here, said the teacher, between the eyebrows. And think of nothing but your essential nature as the spirit. Now, it sounds very simple, but this Ramakrishna is capable. So he closes his eyes. And just in a few seconds, he gets disturbed, he opens his eyes and says, I can't do it. Totabu said, why can't you do it? I am your teacher, I am ordering you to focus your mind there, just between the eyebrows. They begin the process of meditation. Ramakrishna says, my guru says so, I have to do it. He closes his eyes, again, becomes disturbed, opens his eyes, I can't do it. Totabu said, what's the problem? He said, every time I close my eyes and focus my mind here, the blissful image of the mother goddess, appears in front of me. Ah, my boy, you're meditating. Ah, sweet little boy. <laughs> she keeps popping up. Now, see, Totapuri has no time for gods and goddesses. He said, look, take out the sword of Vivek, discrimination. Take the sword out. If the mother goddess appears, chop her in half. Chop her in half. The boy who has loves the mother goddess is now told to chop her in half. You see, we are now moving from the Dvait to the Advait. And that arbitrariness, the linkage, has to be kind of transcended. Ramakrishna says, I will try. Again, he's struggling. Now, Totapuri picks up a piece of sharp glass, which was on the floor. In India, you'll find all these glasses all the place, all of them. <laughs> he picks it up and makes a mark on his forehead. Very harsh, hard. So it starts to bleed. The mark starts to bleed. Totapuri says, focus there now, my boy. See what happens. In the third attempt, Sri Ramakrishna, a young man, closes his eyes, focuses there, and goes into the deepest meditation that the Hindu scriptures prescribe or subscribe, the highest form of meditation. He enters it instantaneously. Now, let me tell you a little bit about Totapuri. For him to master that meditation, where you be, recognize your essential nature as the spirit and not the body or the mind or the intellect. You rise above it very fast and you become established in that. Totapuri took 40 years of practices, 40 is recorded, before he hit the target. And this boy in five minutes has hit the target. He can't believe his eyes. He says, something is weird here, unusual, <coughs> unusual. But he seems to be in deep meditation. I will not disturb him. So he left the room and locked it so that nobody else will go and disturb him. And after a few hours, he gently opened the room 
open the door, hoping that the young says, ah, yes, yes, I've done it, let's come, let's go. The young man is in deep meditation, his face is radiant, shining brightly, absolutely like a statue. At the highest form of meditation, even the bodily functions stop. It is like a piece of log, a rock. He's sitting like that, shining, face is shining, you know he's not dead. Face is shining, and yet there is no movement at all. Even the heart almost stops. Here the link with the body has been severed. The body just carries on, on, an, on, the, on an automatic gear, but severed, there is no linkage. Tota boy wonders, how can this boy achieve the highest state in such a such short time? Never mind, close the door, let him do, sit there. He comes again next day, no change. Food, drink, who cares? This is a piece of wood, piece of rock, steadfast, shining. This is real story, friends, real story in our time. No exaggeration, nothing, no movement. Again, he locks the room, goes away, comes back the third day, nothing. You may think, well, what kind of state is this? Is it a state of kind of inertia, like inert matter, you're you know, stuck like that, like a statue? Mm -hmm. Look, if you ever had a glimpse of this experience, this is the most blissful state. You are in your element, the real element, not the make-believe world that you live in. You're given up this shadow existence, and you establish yourself in your true being. This is the most blissful state. Bliss is the only word. You are establishing <coughs> that. This is the most exciting, interesting, and, 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 and this is what spiritual is all about, experiential, as, experiential aspect of religion. This young man is established in that, Advait. Highest experience the Hindus, Hindus you know, talk about. After the third day, Tota Puri begins to panic. He said, I will send this boy away and he's not coming back. It is said that in that state, only some people can return if they've got some important function still to fulfill. They disappear because they couldn't be bothered to re-establish link with the body or the mind. They are in their blissful state. They have lost all the linkage. They don't come back. Totapoism, what have I done? I've sent him off. This is, this is terrible. Now this is a true story, and this is what they have they prescribed in the in the, in the in the in the scripture. They say you shout as loudly as, as you can in his in his ears, Hari Om. So that part of the temple was you know loudly ringing out with the sound of Hari Om. The Totapuri is screaming his head off into the ears of the little youngster, Hari Om, to bring him down. After a lot of Hari Oms, <laughs> a little bit of movement was seen in the boy. He came out of meditation. He bowed down to his teacher. He was a very humble man. This Ramakrishna was humbler than you can imagine. Soft like butter. He bowed down to his teacher. They embraced each other. And Totapuri was crying tears of joy. My boy, my student, <laughs> you hit the target on the first time? This is incredible. How did this happen? I don't know what the answer. Because my mommy. <laughs> I was chopping her, but she said, don't worry, go for it. I said, this is an incredible story. You see why? Reconciliation between the Dvait and the Advait. See? Now the story doesn't stop there. It goes a stage higher. How can you go any higher than that? Just watch the story. See how the tables are turned. The story goes a stage further. Now Totapuri doesn't normally stay in any one place for long than more than a few days. He would, he's supposed to be like a rolling stone. He keeps together, you know, moving on. But here, because he's attracted to this Ramakrishna and see this brilliant boy. He can't move away. He's, at, he's kind of attached. So he stays there for a little longer. Now the story unfolds in an unusual manner because this part, Totapuri, he had not come to teach, he had come to learn. But he was not aware of that. That is why he was kept alive. There was one bit that was missing in Totapuri and he was going to get it. <laughs> this is the bit. You see, whenever Ram Krishna, even after this highest experience of Advait, Ram Krishna would continue to sing the glories of the Mother Goddess, get up in the morning, sing her bhajans, you know, happily, you know, do this, you know, tali, you know, like that. And one day Totapuri is showing in the early morning, he said, my boy, you hit the Advait. You are that, that you're worshipping. You don't need all that. Do you know what language is? The, the common language between the Totapuri and Ram Krishna was Hindi. So, he said, kya, roti thokte ho. You know, this is what he said. You know, they're making chapatis. He said, what are you doing? 
And Ramakrishna smiled. No, I'm just singing the glories of the mother goddess. So that boy smiled. Okay, he's a quaint little boy. Let him. When the story goes, this, this is the next chapter of the story is very interesting. On that night, Totapuri had the ab ability to close his eyes and go into the deepest meditation at the flick of, a, flick of his fingers. It was that easy for him. On that night, Totapuri had great difficulty in getting into meditation. However hard he tried, he get itches here, there, and he's a person with above body consciousness and he's having real body consciousness. He's struggling to get into meditation. He tried all night and he got very annoyed with himself. He's a very powerful personality. So when he got annoyed, he couldn't get into deepest meditation himself. He said, this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. I cannot be controlled like my body cannot get in my way. I am the spirit. The body is getting in my way. I know what I'm going to do. Now, again, this part of the story comes with health warning. We don't do it. He said, I am going to throw the body away. Discard the body. Spit it out. As I said, we, this is not for us. For Totapur, he can do it. He said, now, he's a tall man. Very majestic personality. How can he get rid of his body? He's going to hang himself on the tree or something. That's not, that's not his style. There was a huge flowing river Ganga. So Totapuri said, easy, here's the river Ganga. I throw the body in the Ganga, end of it, end of the story. So no more, this body cannot get in my way. I am the spirit. Let's kick it out. So in the middle of the night, you see, all this drama is taking place. In the middle of the night, Totapuri says, let's go into the water and throw the body away. Can you believe this? I'm telling you, I'm not exaggerating. This is a real story recorded properly about 150 years ago. It's not even prehistoric times, recent. So Totapuri started walking into the river Ganga. Normally, it's very in that part of Kalka, it's very wide, very deep. He starts walking. And of course, after a few steps, you should be able to go underwater and, and throw the body away, let it you know, be washed away. He walks, and the water is less than ankle deep. He goes into the middle of the river, it's still ankle deep. Now, this is a majestic man. Now, this is a majestic man cannot kill himself by throwing into ankle deep water and then you know, putting his face and I'm drowning, I'm drowning. This is not, this is not, this is not on. This is highly, you know, kind of. So, Totapuri said, this is not enough water here for me to drown. Let me go further up. He went to the other bank of the river, right, went to right across, and there was not enough water to drown. This was getting out of hand. And Totapuri said, getting really annoyed. He said, this is terrible. I can't even throw the body away. There's not enough water in the Ganga to you know, wash my body away. This is ridiculous. Something is happening. Something is wrong here. He looked around. Story. He looked around. He said, ah. Everywhere he looked, he saw the mother goddess smiling, laughing loud, out aloud. And Totapuri said, this is magic here. <laughs> I can't even get rid of my own body at my will. And I am the Advaiti. I am the one who is established in good experience as myself. This is ridiculous. He smiled. He said, I will learn my lesson. He walked back, sat in front of his dhuni, in a little fire that he lights, and sat there, smiling. Early in the morning, Ramakrishna came out of his room, smiling. He knew what had happened already. <laughs> He came near Totapuri. Totapuri said, my boy, teach me one or two versions of your mother goddess. I saw her, <laughs> I saw her last night. I can't avoid her. <laughs> and Ramakrishna smiled. Let me tell you the discussion between the guru and the disciple. You see who is the guru and who is the disciple now. And see how in what simple, simple language Sri Ramakrishna explains the highest philosophy. He says, he gives the story of Ram, Sita and Lakshman going into the forest. Look at the narrative, he's, he's a master of narrative, this Ramakrishna. He says, it's like this. When Ram, Sita and Krishna are walking in the forest, they were walking in a single file. Ram would be leading, Sita would be the middle, and Lakshman would be at the end. This is how they used to go into the forest. You see, now Lakshman has tremendous love of Ram. You see, the love that Lakshman has for Ram is unbelievable. Tremendous. So while they are walking, Lakshman misses Ram because Sita gets in the way. Because he must catch sight of his ideal from time to time to get sustenance, to get his life back in. So he keeps missing his Ram. So he keeps looking, you know, kind of down, down, you know, kind of, you know, very distressed. And Sita looks back. She says, ah, I know why he's distressed. She steps aside. 
for Lakshman to have a catch, to catch glimpse of his ideal Ram. From time to time she moves aside for, so that Lakshman can catch glimpse of his ideal Ram, Sri Ram. Ah, says Ram Krishna, this is the story of Mother Goddess and your Atman and Brahman. Unless Mother Goddess steps aside, you can't even recognize you are the Atman or the Brahman. <laughs> you as the individual, when you wish to link with your true self, your ideal, unless Mother Goddess plays ball with you, you will not get it. <laughs> so this Mother Goddess, this Dwait idea and the Dwait idea are closely linked. This again and again becomes visible in the story of Ramakrishna. He says, you can assert you are the Atman, you can assert you are the Brahman, you are Brahman, you are the manifestation of Brahman. These philosophic ideas are fine, but there is an intermediary, and that intermediary is no different from Brahman. And that, you see, again, this idea of vilifying Maya, this is not a vilifying thing. The only way spirit becomes visible is through Maya, and it is through Maya that you transcend. This is the idea. See, again, this, this, this reconciliation comes through this marvelous story. So when this Totapuri was successful, this was not because of his effort, but there was somebody who was saying, okay, my boy, you can catch a glimpse of Atman. Somebody was helping him. And when Totapuri said, no, I will throw my body away, the other person, you can't even throw your body away <laughs> until I let you. <laughs> Such a lovely story. The linkage between Dvait and Advait, visible in the story of Ramakrishna. The story continues. Now you see, the, here we see the linkage between the Bhakti Marg and the Gnana Marg. And again, not Gnana Marg is, is a dry philosophy, you know, kind of, you know, material, but experiential as Advait, as, as experience of Advait, become very kind of closely knitted together in the story of Ramakrishna. <laughs>